Fans may be familiar with the story. Takes us to the capital of the Garden State. Jeremy. In New Jersey, you can't fill up your tank with gas because they want humans to do that, but they will let dogs collect that. These are golden retrievers. They are golden retrievers. Do they teach the dogs to go fetch the, the dog bats? dog fetches the bat as a bat boy would. And not just one bat dog, there has been a lineage of bat dogs. Call me a hopeless romantic, but there's nothing better than opening day. Probably because it reminds me of dad. Like many of you, I'm sure, it was my dad who taught me to love the game. For some, it's the sight of the ballpark. For others, it's the crack of a bat. But for me, it's really the smells that bring me back. The fresh cut grass, popcorn at the concession stand, the leather cover of a new baseball that you just want to chew on forever and ever. Oh, man. <laughs> or at least just roll around on, because that's kind of fun, too. My name is Derby. Around here, they call me the Bat Dog. See these big sticks? Those are bats. When one falls on the ground, it's my job to pick it up. And for whatever reason, people love it. How did I get such a sweet gig? Uh, it's pretty simple, really. It's the family business. This is my dad, Chase, way back in 2002, before I was even born. He practically invented the bat fetching industry. The goal was to entertain the fans, to, to have something here that the fans would absolutely love. The guy behind me, that's Eric. He's the one that hired my dad. Most folks looked at my dad and saw just another waggly tail. Eric saw potential. It was an incredible, incredible hit. The fans went crazy over it. We, we couldn't believe the response. We have uncovered, or rather unleashed, a major talent from the minor leaguers. This league. is Chase, an official member of the Trenton... A League. dog who collects baseball bats from minor leaguers. Who puts a whole lot of bite into the lineup. We've even had a Japanese film crew come over and do a story on him. It turns out that he was a huge hit in Japan. Heck, Dad even got to meet Godzilla. He was on top of the world, schmoozing with athletes, shaking hands, and kissing babies. He even had his own line of memorabilia at the gift shop. But it wasn't just advertisers that were attracted to Dad. In 2007, he caught the eye of Cinderella. She had a great temperament. She was a great-looking dog. Cinderella, I just thought, would be a, a perfect match with Chase, and, and she was. Pretty soon, Mom and Dad started a family. That's me on the right with my five brothers and sisters. Like most boys, I looked up to my dad. Whatever he did, I did too. So naturally, I fell in love with baseball. In the first inning, he would sit in the press box in, and, watch, and watch Chase. He would sit there, and I'd, I'd point him out, said, look at this, look at this, watch, watch what he's doing, watch what your dad is doing. And he sat there, and he just sat there mesmerized. And we knew that he was really getting into it. I wanted to be just like Dad, to run real fast and to fetch the bats myself. Get the bat. Good boy. So in 2008, I began to train with Shelly. I received a call from the Trenton Thunders uh, asking me if I would train uh, a dog to be the bat dog. Come on, Derby. Good boy. Derby, come. They brought me this 
golden retriever that was about three months of age, and he said, we want this dog to be the future bat dog. Get the bat. Good boy. We were training him five days a week. Good boy, Derb. So it's a combination of training, exercise, and letting the dog go out and just enjoying himself. The next year, in 2009, I got the call. I was ready for the minor leagues. Well, almost. I go a little wide on this one. Call it first game jitters, but I was thrilled to be following in dad's footsteps. We were like the Griffies, father and son on the same team. I would fetch bats for an inning, and then dad would take his turn. Life was good. There were times when Chase would be the ultimate professional, and you could see Derby just wanting to play with him, and Chase basically would say, it's not playtime, it's, it's time to go to work. For 56 years, that's eight in human years, Dad fetched bats for the thunder. But by 2010, the spotlight began to wear on him. Chase, you know, started to get gray. You could, you could definitely see it in his face, and he wasn't as fast as he, as he used to be. Still loved going out there and getting the bats. As much as Dad loved being at the field, in 2012, arthritis forced him to retire. It's hard, you know. He's he's part of the he's part of the image around here, and he made the legacy, you know. I definitely felt that Derby realized something was happening with Chase, and uh, it, it got to the point where uh, he just would never leave his side. In January 2013, Dad went to see the vet. I could tell the news was bad. Dad began taking a lot of medicine that, that made him really tired. He didn't want to play anymore. If it's ever touched your life, you know cancer sucks. Tributes poured in, and he even got invited to Yankee Stadium. He finally made it to the big leagues. On July 5th, 2013, the guy I looked up to more than anyone else made his last appearance for the Trenton Thunder. We brought him out. We had to basically physically carry him out. You could just see how, how sad he looked. It was just heartbreaking for everybody, and we wanted to make sure that he got honored. I wanted him to hear the applause that one last time. Three days later, on July 8th, 2013, I said goodbye. Earlier today, the AA Trenton Thunder announced that the team's longtime mascot and bat dog Chase passed away following battles with lymphoma and arthritis. He was 13 years old in human years, 91 in dog years. Dad was the ultimate professional. He would have wanted the show to go on. So the next day, I was back at the ballpark. But I couldn't help feeling alone. Derby just totally changed personality-wise. He became so sad. He missed his father. That was the time when Derby realized that now everything was falling on him. How do you follow in the footsteps of a legend? How do you follow your own hero? Sat down with their vet, and I said, I'm, I'm really worried about Derby. He's, he seems so down. He's missing Chase so much. What will cheer him up? And they said, having a companion. That's exactly what I needed. A few months after Dad passed, I met a girl, Reba. I mean, look at her. That December, we welcomed two puppies, a girl named Mickey and a boy, Rookie. I'll never forget the first day they came home. <laughs> Derby, who is that? <laughs> Derby, you're the baby. Just like my father introduced me to baseball, 
I did the same with my pups. Rookie was a natural. It's the son following the father's tradition. And now you see Rookie also following in the same tradition. It's as American as apple pie. Get the bat. With Shelly's help, I started teaching Rookie to fetch bats. Good boy, Rook. Just like his old man. And <laughs> just like his granddad. Good boy, Rook. Come on, Rookie. Come on. I think it kind of reminds you of those memories you have when you were growing up, learning something from your dad when you were just a kid, and in his case, a puppy. <laughs> I taught Rookie everything I know. Here's a pro tip. Always grab the bat by the fat end. The skinny end is covered with this sticky goo that just gets stuck in your teeth, and it is gross. I also introduced Rookie to my guy. Rookie, want a treat? Want a treat? You can always score some treats off the trainer. Oh, I don't got no more. It was all in preparation for opening day. April 16th, 2015. Rookie's minor league debut. I'm a little nervous for him because I know he's put in a lot of hard work for his training, so we're rooting for him. Everybody's going to be watching and paying attention to it. It's the bottom of the first inning. All eyes are on my boy. Diaz's 1-0 pitch is a swing and a pop-up. And the left fielder, Coure De La Cruz, reaches up and makes the catch. Ladies and gentlemen, making his special bat dog debut is And like he shot out of a cannon, Rookie goes right past the bat. Oh boy, he's excited, huh? Rook! Okay. So Rookie is just running around the infield right now, and so I don't think that one's going quite as well as could have been hoped. As he's now down the left field line and running in foul territory in front of Portland's dugout. Rookie Cobb! Yeah, oh this one might take a little bit to, to try and haul in the... He must know it's his night. Yeah. Well, the center fielder, T. Cody, has him, and now Rook. Rookie comes charging back in towards the infield. Let's just say it's an embarrassing moment. Okay, so maybe Rookie just wasn't ready. Bottom line, he just came up too soon. But that's okay. Baseball is a game of failure. Nobody gets a hit every at bat. The important thing is to have fun. So after the game, that's what we did. Dad once told me about a wise bear named Yogi, who said that love is the most important thing in the world. But baseball's pretty good too. I've never forgotten that. It's what I've tried to teach my son. Ready, one, and two, and three. One and two and three. Good dogs. That's the way. That's what's great about baseball. The names and the faces change, sure. But as long as there are fathers and sons, the love for the game will live forever.